All right, if we want to convert from a linear now back to a nonlinear equation, right? We either have to be given a table of values or we need to be given some kind of a graph, right? So here we've been given the graph of two uh, nonlinear equations which have been converted and we need to convert them back to their form, okay? So we need to remember the equation for a nonlinear uh, graph is in the form y, big Y, equal to mx plus c. So having a look at our equation, you'll notice that we don't know the value for m or the value for c yet, right? However, we have enough information in order to do that. So using basic coordinate geometry to calculate the gradient, we know the gradient is just change in y over change in x. So here we have two x co or two coordinates, so we have 6 and 8 and 4, and this is just um, 0 slash 4. And we can quickly calculate the gradient. So we're going to have 8 minus 4 all over 6 minus 0. And this is going to give us a gradient of 2 over 3. Okay. Now, in the first one, we can actually see that the y-intercept is 4. So there's no need to go and calculate it. So c immediately is equal to 4. All right, so we can now finish our uh, non well, nonlinear version of the straight line equation y equal to 2 over 3 times x plus 4. Okay? Now we need to go back and we need to look at the axes of these two graphs and have a look and see y is actually equal to y and x is actually x squared. So we can replace those now, y was just y equals 2 over 3, x was modeled after x squared plus 4. And there's the equation for our nonlinear equation. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. The second one will do in exactly the same way. So this is a nonlinear equation, so it'll be in the form y equal to m big X plus c. And again, we need to calculate the gradient and we need to calculate the y-intercept. The y-intercept is not obvious this time because we don't have it. We'd have to calculate it in another way. So the gradient will do the same way. The gradient is changing y over change in x. So we can call this point 1 and point 2. So we're going to have 2 minus 7 all over 6 minus 1. And that's going to give us a gradient of 5 over 5, so minus 1. All right, so this time the y-intercept is not obvious, so we're going to have to use a different method. So we're going to substitute a coordinate in to calculate it. So let's just write the equation we have so far. y is equal to minus 1 times x plus c. So using either of the two coordinates, we can use 1, 7. So 7 is equal to minus 1 times 1 plus c. So we get c equal to, so once again, rewrite our main equation, y is equal to minus 1 times big X plus 8. Okay, now we need to go and look what x and y were. So if we, again, if we go back to the graph, we'll see that the y was modeled after x, y, and x was just modeled after x. So we'll replace y with x, y. So we have x, y equal to minus 1, and x was just x plus 8. And resolving for y, we need to divide everything through by y. So we'll get y equal to, well, minus x divided by x is just minus 1. So we're going to get 8 divided by x minus 1. All right, we can do the same thing if we have some kind of logarithmic function. Okay, so the variables x and y are such that y equal to a times b of x, right, where a and b are constants. And the diagram shows the graph of the log y to x, okay? And it passes through these two points, and we want to find the value of a and the value of b, okay? So we need to change the equation that we're given, y equal to a times b of x into some kind of logarithmic equation, right? And the hint here is that we are told that y is being uh, represented by log y. So we're going to take logs of both sides. So we'll have log y equal to log 
a times b of x. Using our log laws, we'll split those up. Plus log b to the x. And using the power rule, I'll bring the exponent down to the front. So we're going to get log y equal to x log b plus log a. Okay, so if we had to compare this to uh, our equation, then this would be y, this would be m, this would be x, and this would be c. Okay? And that makes sense if we have a look at the graph we've been given. Log y is representing y, x is representing x. Okay, so from here we can now work out what our... Uh, our linear equation is. We still don't know what m and c are, but we can calculate those. So to calculate m, m is just change in y over change in x. So again, we can just take uh, the coordinates and we'll go 13 minus 5 all over 6 minus 2. And that's going to give us 2. Okay, to calculate c, we can just use our equation y equal to 2x plus c. We can substitute in any of the points, so let's go 2 and 5. So we'll have 5 equal to 2 times 2 is 4 plus c, so c is equal to 1. Right. So we can finish off by writing our, our linear equation, which is y equal to 2 times big X plus 1. Okay. And now we're going to compare our nonlinear equation to our linear equation. So if we have a look when we convert it here, this is what we got, right? So we're going to compare the two equations together. So y is represented by log of y, okay? 2x, so 2 is the gradient, and the gradient in our equation was log of b, right? x was just x, and 1 was c, and c was represented by log of a. So by equating the two, we can find the values of b and a. So log of b must be equal to 2, because they, that is representing the gradient. We worked out the gradient as 2. This is to base 10, so solving for this, we can say that b is just equal to the base is 10, so 10 to the power of 2. And that gives us b equal to 100. And the same thing here, log of a must be equal to 1. And so a must be equal to 10. So that's uh, how we could change from a, a, a linear form back to its non-linear form, or how we can be given the equation for both, and we have to compare them to find the values for a and b. So the equation for this original equation could have looked something like y equal to 10 times 100 to the power of x, for instance.